just to be on record, I enjoy my vegetables and plants need CO2. So I want to make sure we still have plenty of CO2 out there. So we have green grass and green vegetables growing because we, we need CO2. We can't eliminate all CO2. So I think, uh, I think we, we, we're going to have an interesting debate for those that want to, want to produce something that's actually needed by our environment, <laughs> claiming that they're improving the environment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sunday, for presenting this report to the committee today. We appreciate it. And uh, for the members, I'd encourage you all to read through the report. I think it uh, has a lot of excellent ideas. It was the product of many minds um, from different uh, advantage points joining together and brainstorming and, and working as a team to come up with, I think, a great plan for what they're calling an energy-enabled economy. I love that term. So. Um, they coined a nice new, uh, nice new phrase to be used, I think, energy-enabled economy. And that's what, uh, as Representative Fritz had said, many of his constituents are realizing a change in quality of life for themselves and their families and future generations within their family as a result of an energy-enabled economy. And I think all of our citizens benefit from an energy-enabled economy. As Representative Rapp said, on a cold day like this, when... Solar and wind just is not going to get it for providing the level of power you're going to need to generate so that you can sit here without your hat and gloves on um, and still have the lights on. Um, I think that uh, the average individual that's out there trying to heat their home in Philadelphia today or in Pittsburgh are very thankful that natural gas has done uh, has been developed so much here in Pennsylvania that their heating bills aren't going to be as high as a result of this cold snap that we're dealing with this week as they might have been 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, a lot of the folks that are out there working across Pennsylvania and Beaver County right now with the, with the cracker facility, hundreds of iron workers employed there on that site now, crane operators, dozens and dozens of cranes in operation right now. And in the future, over the next decade, as that cracker plant is brought to a realization and you see other entrepreneurs locating their businesses possibly from other states, into that area because now they have the opportunity to utilize what's being developed out of that cracker plant and are able to produce those plastics and, and other assorted products that, uh, that so many sitting here today actually either have in your pocket or, or on your person or back in your office. So we have uh, an energy-enabled economy is going to benefit every Pennsylvanian and I think it's exciting to realize that we can have that reality for the benefit of our citizens at the same time as improving our environment and ensuring that we actually have a debate that's based on good science. Because I think, you know, for, for promotion of ideologies, as Representative Dush had said, just to try and uh, put, put your own view out there instead of taking all the facts into account, um, I think is, is very flawed science, very flawed reasoning, and not something that our citizens will ultimately appreciate or benefit from. So thank you for this report. I'm looking forward to uh, working with all the uh, interested parties and trying to implement it as fast and furious as we're able to for the benefit of Pennsylvania.